all right boys welcome back to another poi breakdown in this one we're going to hop into the aerial view of misty meadows and fully break it down as best as i can if you're new to the channel or you just stumbled across this video i want to let you know what the poi breakdown is it's a video series on the channel where i fully break down pois and i break them into three parts okay the first part is going to be buildings to land whether you're a trio solo or duo so i make it very easy to understand trust me on that man it's super simple to follow and then part two of the videos is usually the fighting strategies basically the loot you get should you flee or should you fight and it's very in-depth and then going into part three is going to be the rotation strategies how to rotate out of there depending on what your goal is aka if you're looking to w key the best ways to rotate out of that poi aka misty meadows for kills or if you're looking for placement points the best routes to go to get placement points and avoid fights so it's very very universal video but I do have to let you know if you're if Misty Meadows isn't your POI and you're just kind of stumbling across this video, make sure you do watch straight through till the end because at the end in the end screen I will put up like a video uh, playlist with all my POI breakdowns in it. So hopefully and more than likely your POI uh, that you use will be in there, man. Trust me. And make sure you do share the video with your solo, your well, your solo, but your duo or your trio. You know, make sure your whole team is in the loop. And I do want to get started in the video, so I'm gonna go straight through to part one. But first, I just want to give a quick introduction to myself, and I am a Fortnite coach, and all I want to do is give you the best information so you can use to improve as fast as possible in Season 6 and all the seasons to come. So if it, anything helps, man, in this video, make sure you do hit that sub button so you can stay up to date with all the best Fortnite tips. Now that that intro is out of the way, boys, I'm going to shoot you over to part 1, and if, you know, you need to, use the timestamps to, you know, skip through things faster. Thanks very much, boys. Okay, so for anybody who's new here, I don't want you guys getting lost. So I'm briefly, about 30 seconds, it'll take me to explain what we're going to do. So down here in the bottom right, you can see IGL, Frag, and Support. Blue, any blue lines on this map means I'm drawing IGL. Any pinkish, purplish lines means I'm drawing a Frag. And then obviously, red is Support. So there are the different roles you have in a trio. But if you are a solo, just pay attention to the blue lines. If you're a duo and you are a fragger, pay attention to the purple. But obviously, if you're a duo, it's IGL and fragger. And then if it's a trio, you pay attention to everything. So hopefully that made sense. I'll go through it one more time real quickly. IGL is blue lines. So if you're an IGL, pay attention to the blue lines. And if you're a solo, the only role in solo is IGL. So also pay attention to the blue lines. In uh, duos, there's a fragger. And in trios, there's a fragger. But in duos, the fragger is the second player. So in duos, make sure your duo does know what's going on. Make sure you do send this link to them or whatever it may be, man. Just make sure your whole team knows what's going on. But I'm going to go straight into it and fully break this whole POI down as best as possible. Now, usually I start off by dividing it up and showing you the best drop spots to land within this video for a duo or a trio or a solo. Um, and it's going to be a simple split like this where you can kind of split it into segments Um that are kind of just half split you know so you have it like this this is the way it seems to get divided most times now see there is a lot of kind of cuts in this whole poi um, and that's just kind of how it tends to be but that's the way i like doing it it just gives me a, a nice visual of which way i can split this up and what way is the most overpowered and instantly i can already see the two most overpowered drop spots by doing that i don't even need to look at chests like i will put chests on so we can see what we're talking about so when we put chests on we can see straight away that over here has six chests, here has six chests, here has six chests. So, you know, it's very easy to see that these are the three most overpowered spots. Obviously, here you have five, here you have three, so you know that that's a nada, and here you do have six. So, like I said, these three spots. Now, first of all, we want to rule this one out because this is the worst one to be in. Because if you are in this one, let me get rid of everything on screen with my rubber. Um, well, just these boxes to be specific. If you're in this middle one, again, I'll put it in a box right now real quickly for you boys. Um, if you are in this middle one, um, like this, you can get pinched from this side. You can get pinched from that side. So you're very much so just don't want to be here, man. Especially because if you get up on a roof here, one of these roofs, and try and beam someone down here, you can get shot in the back very easily. And it's just a careless mistake that most people make, even myself at times. You know, you just kind of forget to build a wall behind you. And these buildings are awkward as hell to build on all these buildings. So you got to keep keep uh, keep your eye on that. So this building is ruled out. So we're going to be playing with these two buildings right here. And yet again, I'm not going to go too busy into this one. Because here, 
you can actually get third partied in this spot here you can get third partied from behind and i've been the guy doing the third party and so i know that this is definitely a strategy you've got all these little buildings over here and there's actually one more further up this way up up north as well as up on top here but what i'm saying is there's a lot of buildings here where people can come in for a cleanup and then even if you progress over here real quickly for a, like a clean w key game you just clean this 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 aisle out people will come up behind you and then do the same thing when you're up on them roofs beaming people are trying to get in you're going to get beamed so the same thing happens so to avoid that what you do is you take the approach from the complete opposite side aka this whole lot of buildings right here and with this does let me just make that box a little cleaner because it will piss me off but with this um, you get so much more opportunities because there's a lot of loot here, okay? You can divide it, okay? That's one house. You've got two houses. And again, you could probably get a guy in here. So you could probably run it like this. You get me? You can probably make that a thing. You can, you can definitely do that, you get me? And have an L. Um, but the, the great thing about this is, so let's say you do run it like this, okay? You've got your five, six, seven, eight chests between three people. Um, that's like 2.5 chests per person, but obviously not. So it's like, you know, two two chests each. Um, or you can just run it. This guy gets two chests, three and three. And that makes sense. Now, I'm going to be showing you who lands where in a minute. But you do have the great option of pushing here, looking down, and you, no one's going to shoot you in the back because you looted this whole side. You do have the... If there's nobody here, you can just easily progress and claim that loot. So you have way more loot. If nobody contests this side on a one-off, and people do contest this side... This side is the best side to be on because there's way more loot. If you split this bridge down the middle, there's more loot on this side than this side. So that way this side would be better. But because of the tall buildings and stuff like that as well, it gives you great opportunities to flee. So you can full on just, I'm out of here or go down here. Or I want to rotate over to the bridge and get mechanical parts. Or I just literally want to get this chest, go down here and go fishing. You know, there's a river down there, that river flows down like that. Um, you boys can't really see them arrows, but you have the option to just full send and dip, which is very, very useful because me as an IGL always want to have a back backup plan to get out if things don't go smoothly and we get terrible loot or the players were, you know, contested where are just cracked. So now I'm going to show you who lands where very, very quickly so that way we can move on to the next part. So if you're an IGL, I recommend your IGL landing here simply because it's the the biggest building you know it's, it's a very humongous building and um, if i do say so myself so you want your I igl here because again you have great vision from this building believe it or not there's two buildings here by the way i'm pretty sure that are connected so your igl can take his time and loot this but because if you get up on the roof here what i'm saying is you have a clean kind of scope through over to here so you need and if you get up on this one you will see cleanly over to here as well and that's what's very important for an IGL is to be able to see what's going on so he can advise his team if they're being pushed. Now, it obviously is better if the IGL does got to get a building like this, but unfortunately, the loot for him is not worth it. And the IGL needs to get as much materials as possible because, you know, he's, he's got to command the team, so he has to make plays as well. And then that's why we put air. Obviously, I forgot my blue dot for anyone who's new here as well. When there's a blue dot in a box like this, it means that's where the IGL would land. So then... Let me go to put my pink box for my fragger right beside. You want your fragger getting cracked loot as well. He doesn't need as much materials or as good of a vision, even though here does get great vision down this pathway to see what's happening. But he doesn't get as much loot as these two buildings. And your fragger does need to be, you know, getting a good bit of loot. But if your fragger, obviously he's going to be the most mechanical player on the team, you want him in this position because he's in between you and what's going to be your support over here. Let me just fill that in before I explain any more. So your support is going to take this whole segment right here. Um, so now, you're, now you're, you're most mechanical player, a.k.a. your fragger, which should be your most mechanical player, um, is in the smack bang middle between you, um, if you're an IGL like me, or you if you're a support player. So Or you could be you know, the fragger. But this gives you option that if your boy gets rushed over here, what you can do as a, as a, as a fragger is literally just, boom, you're on him. Or this guy's getting rushed. Boom, you're on him. You get me? So now it's an instant 2v1 or 2v3, which is much... Sorry about that, boys. Phone, but... Damn, man, phone notifications. But it's just much better, you get me? I want to move on to the next part right now to give you as much information as possible. So let's let's get it going, man. Let's get... Okay, boys. So now we're into part two, which is going to be the fighting strategies. There's really only two fighting strategies you need to know about this POI, and that's fight or leave. 
pretty simple. Some you know POIs do have different ways of doing it, but it's pretty simple with this POI, thank God. And that is literally just this, okay? It's this, and it's this. So obviously, there's a if there's a team within here, you know, because the whole trio can land here as well. You can take the fight and take these guys out. So if you win this fight, more than likely you're gonna go and win this fight. But if you're having struggle with this fight, I, I would just leave because there's gonna be a team here. Face it, man, there's gonna be a team here and there's gonna be a team here, more than likely because it's such a good POI. Clearly, when I show you um, like where I showed you and how I broke it down, it's a very overpowered POI. But what you can also just do is dip. You know, yeah, do like I said earlier, you have that option to just dip. But if you want to like see free kills, you can do that if you want as well. So it just depends on the playstyle. But the fighting strategies I would have is huddle up. If you're gonna fight this building, this this segment right here, I would say everybody works their way up towards your IGL. So this actually does affect how you land at the building because you're all gonna work your way up, if that makes sense. So for example, your support player would land this back corner. And then kind of go down and up out the front door or out the side. You need to make it so optimal because if he lands here and goes down, he's working away from the team. So you want him to land the furthest point and work up. So he could work up here, go out, work up. Same here where your fragger can land here and then work his way through the building and out. And then the same with your uh, IGL can land here, work his way up. And then everybody should be on top of each other to go and push here and work their way back down, which is then closer to the bridge. So it's all about optimal thinking because the position that this POI is in is at the bottom and is very rarely in zone so you have to be thinking about that as well sometimes it's it's okay to just kind of back out and dip because you need to avoid people man you know you got to be careful especially um with zone you don't want to get caught in zone man especially if it's a heavy tournament like FNCS man you do not want to get caught in the edge zone and rotating in late you want to get in there early and trust me on that from my experiences like, you want to get into a good position to rotate late if you want to do that. But rotating straight up the middle of the map, you're going to get creamed. So you got to rotate to the right or the left. You get what I'm saying? That's the way I would usually go about it. I don't feel like I need to spend too much more time on this. I'd rather put some more time into what I'm about to talk about next. So let me go on to part three. But first of all, if this video is helping you out, man, help me out by hitting that sub button. But it's not really helping me out. It is and it isn't. It helps my ego out. But more importantly, you're a person that I can help. You're another individual that I can reach to and give out more information. So I want to help you. So please do me a favor, hit that sub button so I can help you that bit more. Now, let's go and do bits in this next part. Okay, boys. So now we're here for the last part, aka part three. And this is going to be a very useful part of the video for you boys wanting to know how to rotate out. So again, I'm going to use my color scheme that I usually use, but it's not referencing IGL or support or frag in this scenario. It's going to be kind of emphasizing the different kind of more like a green yellow and red kind of a danger symbol so the example i'm using blue uh yellow and pink you get me i'll explain as i go but basically the safest way to rotate out of misty meadows for placement is these three ways i'm about to say right now and that is across this bridge and slowly but surely going up and around here you want to get up here that's like ultimate safeness. Like these are the most safest ways to get placement where you're less likely to run into players. Number two is literally straight down and then out and just following the, the coastline all the way around up to here. Then you can, you know, stay on the edge more and keep going. You get me? And stay on the edge the whole game. And that's very optimal. That's exactly what we're doing here as well. You can also play it even more aggressively. But again, you don't want to come down here because this is a shit show usually. But it is more safer to pull all the way around the coast again. So there's the two or three ways you can do it. And obviously you can come out here, but that isn't as safe as going down and around. Because by the time you get down here and you hit the, the water or get a boat, you'd be kind of just, it'd be the same speed as going left to right. So you might as well take that way to avoid more people. Um, and obviously you can stop in here, get yourself a, a shotgun if you wish to. But the yellow then is a bit more risky. It's kind of the, the alternate ways you can go. So I'll show you a great example, which is this. You can veer off and go into Kai. You can veer off here and go in here. I don't know why you, you would have the time, but you never know the way zones can pull. And um, you can veer off and go in here. You can veer off, go in Slurpee. You can veer off, go in here. These are kind of like, you can veer off even go here because you plan on rotating around that. You can veer off and go here. And then for Misty, again, again, you can go here. These are direct rotates that are just 
you know, you could run into players. It's not 100% sure. Like, nothing's 100% sure. But look at it as blue is like, it's 80% likely that you won't run into anybody. Yellow is more of a, more of a, not 50-50, but like kind of a 60-40, meaning like 60% likely to run into somebody. Um, they're, they're the ways you can rotate. And I will tell you now, when I put a red down, I, I tell you right now, don't rotate this way ever. So it's, it's not really going to be a rotate pathway. It's more just going to be an angle. So I would advise not to rotate like this. Okay. You'll see what I'm going to draw right now within this window. Do not rotate within this window. Even if you're W keen, I highly suggest not to. Just this whole window right here. The whole landscape straight up the middle of the map. I, I would not do it, man, if I'm being honest with you. I would just X that out the way I'm doing it right now. Just fully avoid that window, man. It is a shit show in that window. A window of rotations. Um, and obviously, I didn't really say great places to go for W keen. But I can tell you right now, no W keyer should be rotating up that way. Now, if they want to safely W key against the best of the best players, that is not the way to do it. And um, I'll show you right now how I would go about W keen, and that's why I have the pink uh, color. The greatest place to W key from is into lazy. That that's being real with you right now. Straight into lazy. There's no other places you can W key to from misty. You can't actually W key straight into the catty corner, which isn't as bad. So I will put a thing around that. They're the, the only two places I can see you being able to successfully W key and actually come out with kills. You can go slurpy, but it's not a great W key spot. There's not usually a lot of kills there. You can go weeping again, not a lot of kills there. So they would be my go-to POIs after rotating out. And even if retail's in zone, it's not a and it's not a bad shout. You'll get a kill there if you're early enough. So I would say play within these three POIs um, for getting as many kills as possible. Is even just go from Misty to Kai. From Kai. If there's nobody in Kai, they're either in one of two places, which is going to be Lazy Lake or Retail Row. So it's probably better to go from Kai to Lazy. If they're not in Lazy, set up like a hold here and watch them come in from Retail. I, I'll tell you right now, man, that will work. Um, or even just float up on the hill for, you know, 30, 40 seconds and see if there's anybody going to come out of Retail. Or just go into Retail. Go get, get a car, man. It doesn't, you know, take that much time. So. That's all I really have to say, man. I, I've said my piece, and hopefully this video did help you out, man. On the left and right right now, well, just above, man, this way. On top or on bottom, there's going to be a playlist, like I said, that will help you out with more POI breakdowns for your POI. And then on the bottom is a video that I think will help you out a shit ton, man. So let's go with it, man. And I hope you enjoyed the video, man. Make sure you hit that like button, comment down below, because I answer every single comment. So any suggestions, any questions, I got you. I'm out of here.